candid, captivating, compelling. Welcome to Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina. Listen in as Dr. Dina, medical marijuana pioneer and inspiration for the award-winning TV series, Weeds, shares never-before-heard stories, chats with cannabis insiders and celebrity friends, and provides invaluable perspective and insight into one of the fastest-growing industries in the world. CannabisRadio.com proudly presents Cannabis Confidential with your host, Dr. Dina. Welcome to Cannabis Confidential. I'm your hostess with the mostest. When it comes to cannabis knowledge and facts, I'm Dr. Dina, and thank you for joining us today. I have a very special guest, and I know I say that quite often because most of my guests are pretty damn awesome, but today we have, to me, the biggest celebrity we have ever had on Cannabis Confidential, and we are going to take a special trip back in time today with our guest, Dennis Perone, who most of you should know, but most don't, because Dennis is not the type of person that needs to be in the spotlight and brag about all his many accomplishments, but that's what my job is, to brag about all the wonderful things that Dennis has accomplished and express to you all how much Dennis means to the movement, the cannabis movement in the whole. In fact, none of us would have medical marijuana or recreational marijuana in any state in the United States. In fact, it would be completely illegal if Dennis Perone wasn't on this earth. So let me welcome Dennis Perone and get in this magical time machine and take you back in time to before 1996 where we had medical cannabis passed in California. But we're going to go back before that. And Dennis was born in 1945 in Bronx, New York. He's an American medical cannabis and LGBT activist and businessman. Now, back in the days, in the early 70s, Dennis was supplying cannabis to many people in San Francisco and was arrested, and I believe it was in the early 70s. Did that stop Dennis? Of course not. Dennis kept pushing forward, and he would not allow anyone to tell him otherwise. And he knew deep down inside that cannabis was the right medicine for people dealing with HIV and AIDS and cancer. And with his friend, Brownie Mary, who you should also look up as well, who was an amazing person who passed away many years ago that we celebrate every year on Brownie Mary Day in San Francisco. But together, they were able to co-author the bill of Prop 215, which allowed medical cannabis to be passed in California that gave access to all of what is happening today, which gave me an opportunity to open a doctor's office and then a collective to help people. None of that would have been possible without Dennis. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce the man, the myth, the legend, Dennis Perone. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you very much for that opening. I appreciate that. It's good to be on your show and it's good to be here. So, so Dennis, I heard that I've heard stories that you served in the Air Force back in Vietnam. Is that true? Yes, it's true. That's how many How many flights did you take? I was there for a year. 67, 68. I was drafted uh, in the service in 66. And I thought, no, well, I'm not going to send me to Vietnam. Within, within a year, I was in Vietnam. And then the fighting was, it was somewhere else. I was stationed in Saigon. And then wow. the fighting came home. And the dad offensive. And that's, uh, that's when they gave me a gun. They said, here, take this gun. I told them, I'm a clerk. I, I can't shoot it. And they, they want to know why. Said, well, the fact is I closed my eyes. And I shoot <laughs> Can't, I don't. Really you're, you're a terrible. You you can't close your eyes when you shoot. They should have sent you home right away. Well, they wanted to, but it was, it was a war. It was a war going on, and so I told him I can't shoot. And he goes, well, I, I said, "Give me a gun. I'm going to shoot the wrong person." And I told him, hey, "Don't give me a gun." And he thought about it. He says, "Well, I was a man. I said, no, I shoot the wrong person." He said, "You done well, better about it." And gave him give the gun somewhere else. But for punishment, I was assigned to the morgue for 30, 30 days. Now, I'm 19. I never seen, even seen a dead person that month. I saw a lot of dead people, 25,000 people And so now, that now you come home, and you're suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, of course, from having to go through that. And you are realizing that your fellow brothers and sisters have been basically contracting this illness 
and no one really knew what it was. So how did that feel then? Did you Was it just a self, sense of helplessness? I am grateful of guilt. It was, a, a, it was an unjust war. I felt I was part of it. And I, for that, I felt guilty. And I still feel guilty. Because uh, we did horrible, horrible things to those people. Vietnamese, and they're very nice people. They're wonderful people. And uh, I felt guilty about it. Because it saw a lot of unpleasantness and a lot of sadness. And we were, we were attacking innocent people. So I'm still about that. Mindless wars. I feel sorry for the Iraqi people. They were also sucked into our mindless wars. And uh, we think war is the answer, but it's not. It's casualties everywhere. It's the enemies and the Iraqis. So I'm against war. But, you know, after the war, uh, after Vietnam, I was screaming, bring the war home, bring the war home in Berkeley. And then they gassed all the city of Berkeley. So I was saying, we better watch out what you ask for. You watch out what you ask for is right. And then you decided to bring another war to your table, and that was the war against cannabis. So how did that happen when you're when you came home and, and you saw that all that you know your friends were get, contracting this illness that people didn't know at the time was HIV and AIDS, and you knew that cannabis was helping these people. I knew, I knew a long time ago that marijuana is medicine because I help people eat, eat kids around the munchies, the munchies. But that's that's kidding around. It's a good joke, but people can't eat. Like we had with wasting syndrome, with AIDS, we were so very serious. And marijuana makes people feel good. That's, that was good enough for me. But since then, we found that marijuana is so good for everything that I didn't even know. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, Wayne Justman, our good friend, told me that back in the day, you were actually, you were against using cannabis for children for medical use. Is that correct? Well, I, did, I am against him. I'm, I'm for it was medicine. Right. It was, and we had a kid in, in our club. He was 16. He had cancer. And uh, you know, I was under the gun, giving it, allowing kids there. But I couldn't help it. People needed it for medicine. This kid had cancer. He helped him survive. The chemotherapy. And so I let him in the club. I took a lot of heat for that, but I didn't care. Well, let's talk about that club for people who don't know. Dennis started the Cannabis Buyers Club in San Francisco, and that is a very, very special place. It was started before medical cannabis had even passed. It opened in 1992, I believe, after the success of Prop P, which passed in 1991. And in February 94, the club, which was operating at 194 Church Street, which is almost like a, a holy site, you know, for people who lived in San Francisco, they just think so fondly of 194 Church in San Francisco, who was, you know, was founded by the people that wrote Prop 215. So how did you decide to come together after opening up this cannabis buyers club and decide to, to start authoring a bill that would allow people to use it throughout the whole state? Well, it was my mother died of AIDS, and I decided to start a club, a club eventually led to Prop 215. Which was the medical marijuana initiative, and was was that during that time that I realized all use mar- medical. They couldn't use marijuana, but in medical, most people just use it for relaxation. That's medical reasons for stress. That's medical reasons. Most people think, oh, I'm having a good time. That means it's recreational. That's not true. Having a good time is not recreational. It's it's basically life giving. People take Prozac because they want to. No, I, I believe I believe it, Dennis. All use is medical use. I really am a firm believer in that, and you are right, a hundred percent. And we're going to have to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to be back with Dennis Perone and talk more about how he wrote Prop Two Fifteen with his friends, created medical cannabis, the explosion that has happened afterwards, and where we are today with AMA that is on the ballot for California. We want to hear what Dennis thinks of that. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina will continue. After a word from our most confident sponsors. 
source, shop, network, and learn at Indo Expo, covering all things cannabis from seed to sale. Portland, Oregon's Expo Center, August 6th and 7th. Source and shop over 250 exhibitors. Network and learn at our educational seminars all weekend long. Free admission for buyers, store owners, and MJ industry professionals. Looking for a career in the MJ industry? Attend Indo Expo's Career Fair, Sunday, August 7th. Over two dozen companies are looking to place positions from master growers to marketing directors. Visit www.indoexpo.com to learn more. See you at the show. (sighs) <sighs> cash? Sorry. I don't carry around cash, and I don't want to use the ATM and pay surcharges. You don't need to carry cash. Haven't you heard about PayQuick? Okay, tell me about PayQuick. It's the safe and easy way to pay. It works just like your debit card to securely pay for your purchase, and it gives you rewards points every time you use it. Nice. PayQuick, the safe and easy way to pay. P-A-Y-Q-W-I-C-K dot com. Oh, let the marijuana llama tell you something now About a game for your phone gonna make you say wow The game's about the game of growing cannabis for cash Grow the seeds, sell the bud, put the savings in the stash Little by little your empire grows large Put the big celebrities inside your entourage You can choose to play with Snoop or me or Cheech and Chong Cypress Hill, Willie Nelson, Wiz Khalifa with a bong The name of the game is him pink, that's the point Download and play while you light yourself a joint the business of cannabis should be no crime. Hemp Inc. is even hot proved by the man who run high times. Oh yeah, get it on Android and I and iOS today. Marijuana Llama out. Got to tend to me on crops, you know. Money don't make itself. Hemp Inc. Dr. Dina is back with more Cannabis Confidential. Only on CannabisRadio.com. And we're back with Dennis Perone on Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina. I am so excited to have you on, Dennis. So here you are writing the Prop 215 laws. Did you, when you were writing this, did you think this was actually going to pass? No one's ever voted on marijuana. They never had voted. They just did the THC dangerous, dangerous drug. They were telling us why it's dangerous. And... Uh, so people never voted. They, they, thought they saw the real reason for using marijuana. They voted yes. It was possible to kill the war on drugs. A lot of them were still the war on marijuana. And uh, they all knew that it was uh, basically a harmless drug to help people. So uh, it was kind of, kind of confident that it was going to pass because we had, we had three built. Uh, on California ballot, on the, the legislature to, to legalize it. And those, those three bills were vetoed by, by the governor, you know, Wilson at the time. So my major is take the, the language of those three bills that was passed by the legislature and put it in, in the wording of Prop 215. I didn't know if such an explosion would happen. I didn't think it would, I it would win by that much. So it's unbelievable that Prop 215 passed with 55% that we had that many people voting for cannabis, for medical cannabis. That meant at the time of 1996, you had convinced more than half of California that medical cannabis was a positive and not a negative. And then from there, you created this explosion because everybody wanted to be like Dennis Perone's Cannabis Buyers Club in San Francisco. And you were the inspiration for me to open up a a collective to have safe access to medicine available for people who are really, really sick. And I often have people come in to the dispensary and they look healthy. And it's not up to me to decide what their medical condition is. It's the doctor. And oftentimes I've actually confronted someone. In fact, one time there was a young gentleman who came in to buy some clones. And I walked up to him, really good looking kid. And I said, Come on, what do you, what did you, what was your excuse at the doctor's office? You had a hangnail? And he started crying and he said, You can't tell that I lost my eye in Iraq? And I felt so bad. He had a glass eye and I didn't know. And, and after, and he was so excited that I couldn't tell. So it was a nice moment. But the reality is, you know, you, you can't see pain. You don't know what everyone's going through. And everyone has a reason to use cannabis. And Dennis is the one that has, you know, pushed that. 
And now what's really interesting is we have a new issue on the ballot with UMA, UMA, which is the Adult Use Marijuana Act. And that is basically making it legalizing cannabis for recreational use, which I actually hate the word recreational. I'm sure you guys already know this. I think of the word recreational as a little kid going down a slide at a park and that little kid would not have a margarita and a joint in her hand. So recreational is a terrible word. So besides all that, (laughs) and I just think that all medical, what's happening in California as there, I'm still haven't come out as pro or con for AMA, but I'm still like researching it and I'm just like not in love with this. And on one hand, I think it's great that so many people want to make this legal, but on the other hand, are we doing this the right way? And I look at everything that you've done, Dennis, in the past and I question what are these laws that we're, what are we doing? Are we just screwing up medical cannabis in California? Well, that, that is a side effect. If that's the reason he's doing it, I don't really know. I'm kind of Sean, Sean Parker, I guess. Sean Parker, he wants to feel much as in muscle. I'm not sure he even smokes marijuana. Well, it's interesting, Dennis, is Sean Parker, who you're talking about, who was the Napster guy who made all this money stealing everybody's music, right? And now he actually owns all these factories in China that are producing the batteries that all these vapor pens are using. So all the vapor pens you have, the battery that's inside of it is made by Sean Parker's company. So he has something in here to make this legal. He wants it to get legal because it's his vapor pens that are going to profit from it. And that's not yeah. why we have this, pro- you know. So, what do you think about that? I, I don't think I mean, the premise is wrong. He's doing from economic gain. That's just terrible. And uh, he, you have to understand, he doesn't seem to smoke marijuana. Because if he did, he understand that marijuana is a medicine that can die and people need. They really need it. And he, he's, he's setting up a structure where you can buy, you can use probably, but you get taxed it and you get re- restricted. And that's the whole thing, the whole thing is about restriction. I'm against restriction. It's like, well, I haven't walked on people in people's shoes to know why they're using marijuana. I just know for some reason they need it, and it's a medical reason. And that we really have, we have a legal for those people, that's the people I want to. I want to help. This guy doesn't want to help anybody except himself. uh, My people, people that smoke marijuana have suffered so much for so long. I myself have arrested 22 times marijuana. Our people have suffered so much. They have been thrown in jail. They've had their money taken. In some cases, even their children taken. We have suffered. Until you walked in our shoes, then then you would know what we do, what's happened. And now you're trying to restrict it. For what reason? For money? That's all. It's not money. It's for money. It's wrong. It's wrong. We have suffered so long, and the country has suffered. We watched the Bill of, Bill of Rights shredded in our eyes. We watched the police turn to a, a paramilitary force. We got our friends thrown, thrown in jail, thrown in prison, had the money, money taken. And they, they took them taken. We've had enough of this war. We want to end it. And this guy wants to prolong it. So it's wrong if you vote no on Alma, whatever the name is. And yeah. also Prop 37, what number, I'm not sure. But we, uh, they've, they've taken an initiative, put, put it on the ballot in the legislature. So yes, in fact, no they're trying to, they're going to eliminate medical cannabis eventually. And that's what's happening in Washington state is medical cannabis is gone. And so what happens, people don't understand the difference. They say, well, what's the deal? I mean, medical cannabis is the same as recreational cannabis. So, you know, what's the problem? If someone's sick, they can still buy it. And they don't understand the difference. The difference is, number one, you're now limiting the quantity of THC and CBDs in these products that these patients are used to getting for their li- It's like saying, sorry, you could only get half strength penicillin. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, and then the other problem is you're te- being told that you can't grow, you know, that what, how much you would normally grow for yourself. You're being, t- I can't, I have to tax these people more money because it's now recreational and they were paying less money because they were a patient. All these different 
issues are coming into my mind going, this is not what we want. And so, uh, and I hope, I hope our people just don't know it. They, 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 they think they're voting for marijuana. In fact, they're voting for restrictions and to, to limit marijuana. So when they know that, they will vote no. It. It's, yeah, they're uh, voting for provisions, regulations, and restrictions. That's what they are voting for because it is going to be more strict than it is now. We are fine right now. We don't need these laws. We're we're cool. <laughs> I tried to, I said, Prop 15 is the end. But yeah. somehow, for some reason, it's not the end. It's, it, it, it'll make us fight again. But the uh, whole life has been fight, 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 for no reason. The war in Vietnam was wrong. Fighting for that was wrong. The war in Iraq was wrong. wrong. And the war against mar- marijuana is wrong. But no one war. Mm-hmm. No one, Ama, yeah, Ama, Uma, Uma, Ama, whatever. What I don't, I don't even want to say it right because I don't want to get used to it. <laughs> I hope don't get the wrong message here. Don't know on this thing. It just sounds like you're voting against marijuana. You're not. You're voting against restriction. You're voting against the man, the man who hates marijuana. It's Nixon, it's all, it's all Nixon's, it's Nixon's fault. He hated, he hated hippies. He did like marijuana. Let's fuck them over. Get, get them. And so that's yeah. what... You know what's, you know what's interesting? Done. There's like a, oh, there's one line in, in Uma that says, basically they're saying that minors can be snitches, that as in the alcohol industry, they're going to employ minors to buy, as peace officers to try to entrap marijuana dealers into illegal sales. Is that legalization? That sounds like a police state, if you ask me. That's horrible. He didn't know that we have to. I bet he didn't understand. That's a police state. Marijuana was a poison. Just a police state. I think you're smoking marijuana. Therefore, you broke the law. Therefore, can you maximum get 10 years more? marijuana. There's some people in jail for two or years. Well, at, at about 10 years for growing marijuana after Prop 15 passed. So the federal government can recognize medical marijuana. Dennis, we're going to have to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Dennis Perone. Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina will continue after a word from our most confident sponsors. Play as Ted Growing, expelled botany sophomore and the biggest grower in town, only on Weed Firm Replanted. Available on the App Store and Google Play. It's a lot of work being the biggest grower in town. Maintaining a room full of plants while dealing with a slew of eccentric customers, from a hardcore partier to the curious neighbor next door. Is anybody home? Help me expand my bud business by unlocking new strains, customizing my grow room, and completing challenges that you can't get enough of. Grow your empire so big you can see it from space. Low on funds? Don't worry. Weed Firm Replanted is free to download. Download Weed Firm Replanted for free on the App Store and Google Play today. Get growing, Mr. Growing. The next generation of vaporizers has arrived. Vuber vaporizers are blazing the way with unparalleled technology for oil, concentrate, or dry flower pens. Providing unsurpassed customer service and expert craftsmanship, Vuber Vaporizers use cutting-edge technology, providing a power-packed, smoother vapor with a lifetime guarantee. Experience vaporizing the way it was meant to be, the Vuber way. Dr. Dabber, hurry! Its temperature is shooting past 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's burning up! I'm afraid for this little guy, it's just too late. What caused the problem? Only Dr. Dabber can maintain the perfect temperature for a smooth-tasting, slower burn. This standard vaporizer lost all of its health benefits, sending it up in smoke. So you're telling me that most vapor pens burn so hot they produce smoke, not vapor? Correct! Keep away from those standard vaporizer pens and turn to Dr. Dabber, doctor's order. Less heat, (laughs) more flavor. Dr. Dina is back with more Cannabis Confidential, only on CannabisRadio.com. And we're back with Dennis Perone. Okay, Dennis, we got you on a better phone line now. We can hear you even more clear than before. So talk to me about your stroke. When did you have a stroke? 2010. So it was a while ago, but 
And do you think, do you think that using cannabis has helped you progress as a stroke victim? Because I've actually been working with a bunch of people that have had traumatic brain injuries and strokes, and they are convinced that CBD and cannabis, THC, is helping making these connections in their brain that was lost. Well, it's true that I've gotten a lot better since the original stroke, and now it has helped me. I can't, can't exactly say why. Uh, I think that CBC, you know, uh, it's all new. I'm old school, you know. Yes, um, I know. I know we get very helps. technical now about what... what Oh, how much CBD? You're like, just give me some some, some grass to smoke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, but now they're finding out so, so many things about marijuana that I didn't know. I, I didn't know marijuana helps epilepsy. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know marijuana could perhaps help cancer. You know, it helps, it helps people that have cancer go into chemotherapy. We, you know, actually could eliminate cancer. Now they're finding out it helps help people with Alzheimer's. I didn't know that. My case, it wasn't put it available for that reason. Right. So, so I think it's a wonder drug. I think you know, they're finding they're finding out most of the even I didn't know that that finding out it helps people and in places we we never know we never knew. So I think it's criminal to this drug the legal schedule one. It's just wrong. And that's how I feel too, Dennis. I think that you inspired me to go try to attack this at the federal level and try to worry about the descheduling of cannabis and not these silly state laws, which don't really matter to the feds. Because we're still breaking the law. Uh, I know. And I have implored them to change scheduling from day one at the 96. And they they were publicly not have an actor on it. And now today is still Schedule 1. And I, I feel it's a big, it's a big movement for change. And I think the DA is riding up a little bit and will perhaps uh, reschedule marijuana, help the new president, whoever it may be, will reschedule marijuana and allow doctors to prescribe it. I think it should be schedule, off the schedule. Right, off the schedule, descheduled completely. I agree. Yeah, aspirin's on this not a schedule. You know, they're closing. We don't know why they work, but they work. That's good enough for us. So it's good enough for me. And now I hope they never, you can't get hurt. People have not really ever died from now on. That's right. Yes, it, it becomes a psychotic experience sometimes, but it's easy, it's easy to don't lose it because it fits that way. Well, Dennis, you know, you know what, I think it's the, what the coolest thing about you, not only were you just this guy who got thrown into, you know, being in Vietnam and seeing things that just weren't quite, you know, making you happy, coming home and seeing the same type of thing happen with your friends. I mean, to lose 21 friends in one week is like, I don't even, I can't even comp what you went through mentally after working in the morgue and all of this stuff. And then, you know, you're having, losing your lover to, to AIDS and, and, and knowing that you, that, that you really hoped could be kind of like the cure. You know, I lost my grandmother to cancer when I was 13. And, you know, when I see people come in that have been diagnosed with cancer and then they go into remission, it's like, I wish I was able to do that for my grandma, but I know that I'm on the right side of history. As, and that's why I, I look at, you know, the UMA Adult Use Act and I, I after talking to you, this scares me and I'm I'm really thinking that we should be voting against this, even though uh, yeah. pe- people think that voting against it will make the the general public look at this and say, you know, maybe we don't support cannabis because nobody voted for it, so cannabis is bad. But I don't that's not my concern. My concern is giving us bad laws that, yeah, we can try. It does say in the in the, the script that we can lobby to change some of these laws later. But why do we want to go back and have to chase after a mistake that we made? Let's not make the mistake to start with. Exactly. Exactly. And I tell people that. I tell people that. We already have Prop 215. We won. We, we won. Why are you going back to it? Prop 15 is allowed to grow on as much as we want for medical purposes and distributors. And we, we asked the federal government to change. All our congressmen will not sing to our wishes because 
50th congressman in California taking taking demand change and they could they could demand change. It should be rescheduled or descheduled. Well, yep. or Decriminalization to- everywhere and cannabis is medicine and food. I agree with you. I love your your thoughts, but we're running out of time. Before we go, I want to just talk about a little story that you shared with me about a good friend of mine who happens to be Whoopi Goldberg. Tell me, how did you meet Whoopi? Well, I met Jim, Jim Manners, who was uh, an AIDS patient who was unfortunately dead of AIDS. And we met through that. You know, in general, that you remember me, I was on the supply of marijuana in the 70s, which was uh, up here doing a show. Jim Manners was the manager of this club that... Uh, there was a, a, a nightclub. A comedy club or she was, Yeah, it was a comedy club. And she was there. And uh, give me some marijuana, please. She just got back from Europe. And I was the man. And I gave it to Jim. He gave it to her. And I do not even matter, but I'm sure she will remember. But I, I, I'm the man. And when Jim got real sick, she gave my money to the AIDS project in Mali, which he moved. He's out of in San Francisco. But she was very helpful in the, in the beginning of the AIDS epidemic. And I was yeah, she was very outspoken. Too. Very outspoken. But that's so cool that you yeah. were able to be providing weed to Whoopi when she was in town and be her weed wizard. I know. Now she's she now she had product, some kind of product for marijuana. Yeah, she has forward. Whoopi and Maya for menstrual cramps and PMS. <laughs> look, what, look what you true. started. Look what you started, Dennis. I know. I can't believe it. Uh, my life has touched a lot of lives, and for that reason, I'm grateful. And I, there's a lot of people I haven't met who someone thanked me. And I, appreciate, I appreciate helping people. And that, that's the thing I need, just knowing that people are not going to jail. Until I can relief that they need. That, that is so it's very nice and very comforting for me. Uh, I'm sorry, but it's all my guy. He has, uh, he has no pain. He has no, he has no, well, well, our pain. Which he did. I said, no, he would not frame it the way he did. And uh, I just hope we will vote no on whatever number yeah. it is. Uma. And, uh, vote no on Uma for we, Dennis. Dennis, where can people find you? Are, do you have a? I know that you have a, a Wikipedia page that you can find yourself, and I know you're always hanging out at the Castro Castle. But uh, you're on you're on Instagram now as Dennis Perone, right? Yes, and uh, I've got a website. Uh, <laughs> my email is Castro Castle at at Gmail. That's my website. Then just like my email. I don't know so my website. If you want exactly. to reach out to Dennis and send him a love letter, feel free at castrocastle at gmail.com. Or you can check out his yes. website and his Instagram. He is the godfather of all of medical cannabis in our entire country. And to that, we owe you a big ass. And without you, we would all be lost. And so many people would not have access to this plant or even know that this plant has helped so many people. So thank you so much. And you guys can follow me at drdina420.com and on Instagram and Snapchat at drdina420. Twitter is drdina. And go ahead and give us five stars. Give us thumbs up. Share this with all your friends so that everyone knows what a incredible, what an incredible person Dennis is. And when you see him in the streets, Give him some weed, give him a high five, give him a hug, and let him know that we all thank him so much in the bottom of our hearts. And thank you, Dennis, for joining us today. This has been so special thank to have you, you on. Thank you, well, Dennis. It's a pleasure. Well, thank you so much. And join us again for another edition of Cannabis Confidential.
The opinions expressed on this CannabisRadio.com program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of CannabisRadio.com. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without proper consent of CannabisRadio.com is prohibited.